Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be looking at the brachial plexus, but we're only going to be using this right here as a reference. We're really going to be looking at a cadaver image of this, and we'll see a, a bunch of other structures here. So this brachial plexus right here can be quite imposing, uh, but we're going to break it down one piece at a time. We're going to start with all of these roots up here at the top near the neck, and then we'll gradually work our way down to the terminal branches. All right? The very first thing we should figure out here is, are we looking at an anterior or a posterior view? Well, if you're looking at the brachial plexus, it's pretty much always going to be an anterior view. Okay? But we can also tell that because we've got biceps brachii right here. In fact, if we zoom in a little bit, you can actually see over here, uh, medially, we have the short head of biceps brachii, and then right here, laterally, we have the long head of biceps brachii. Right? So there's our biceps. So we know we're looking at an anterior view. Let's go up and start with some of these structures in the neck at the top here, top right of our picture. All right, so first of all, some things not associated with the brachial plexus. Right here, this is our carotid sinus. Okay, so notice if we look at this picture, there's a vessel right here that's clearly been cut. Okay, this and sliced off. Below that, this would actually be the patient's right common carotid artery. Okay, um, because again, we're looking at an anterior view, so we're looking at everything on the right side of the patient. So this is your right common carotid artery. And then near uh, this point right here, where it kind of uh, engorges, this would be the carotid sinus. And then if you look up, you can actually see it bifurcate into the two branches uh, that come off the common carotid artery. And so this one would actually be uh, the internal carotid artery. This one would be the external carotid artery. Okay? So this is your carotid sinus right here. Directly lateral uh, to the carotid sinus, you have this nerve right here. This is the vagus nerve. This is the uh, descending part of cranial nerve number 10. And if you follow it down, notice that it actually loops around this muscle anteriorly. We'll talk about this in just a minute, but this is your anterior scalene muscle. It loops around that anteriorly and just goes inferiorly and then pretty much just goes into the thoracic cavity down here and disappears. All right. Now this muscle that I just mentioned has an important purpose when we talk about the brachial plexus. This muscle right here is the anterior scalene. So the reason it's important here is because if you look directly posterior to the anterior scalene, there's a space. And it's a space really between the anterior scalene and this muscle, which you really can't see. This is actually the middle scalene. Okay? The space between these two scalene muscles is called the interscalene space. And all of these roots of the brachial plexus pretty much emerge through that space. So a space between the anterior and middle scalene, called the interscalene space. And you can actually see all five of these roots of the brachial plexus right here. And those are going to be C5 through T1. So again, if we look at this picture, and I'll zoom back out real quick. Again, remember the brachial plexus starts at C5 and goes down to T1. And generally, when you're talking about the brachial plexus, these are termed roots, but they're not actually nerve roots. What they are is their ventral rami. Okay, so just make sure you understand that. In the context of the brachial plexus, they're termed roots, roots of the brachial plexus, but physiologically speaking, these are ventral rami. Okay, so let's zoom back in up here and identify these roots. Okay. The one up top right here, follow my mouse, this one right here, this is the C5 ventral ramus. This is C5 ventral ramus. Directly underneath that right here is the C6 ventral ramus. Now what you'll notice is that C5 and C6, these two ventral rami, they fuse, right? And what they fuse into is the superior trunk or sometimes called the upper trunk. So here's our C6 ventral ramus. Directly inferior to that is our C7 ventral ramus. And then below that is the C8 ventral ramus right here. And then here's the T1 ventral ramus. And the brachial plexus gets some contribution from T1. Now, with C8 and T1, notice that these two ventral rami fuse into this trunk, which is called the inferior trunk. The C7 ventral ramus does not fuse with any of the other a ventral rami, it goes it alone. And so the C7 ventral ramus really just becomes, what we see right here, the middle trunk. 
And so if we go back to this picture right here, again, we've got three trunks. We've got a superior trunk, we've got a middle trunk, and then we've also got an inferior trunk. And those trunks ultimately form from these ventral rami of C5 through T1, which are the roots of the brachial plexus. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. All right, let's take a look at a little bit more of this. This nerve right here, if you follow this, it seems to come off of the C5 ventral ramus right here. This one is actually initially, superiorly, it's going lateral to the vagus nerve, which is right here. This nerve that's going down like this, this is the phrenic nerve, the right phrenic nerve. And so it's going to descend down, but it's actually going to go anterior to the trachea. Notice that the vagus nerve ends up kind of going beside it and more or less behind it, whereas the phrenic nerve stays anterior to the trachea. And it's going to be descending down to the thoracic diaphragm, which is the muscle it innervates. Okay. Also remember, if we're looking at the C5 ventral ramus in the superior trunk, we've actually got four nerves that actually come off of those, two from the C5 uh, ventral ramus and then two from the superior trunk. We're not going to be able to see really well the nerve to subclavius here, but let's take a look at these on the cadaver. All right, so first of all, if we're looking at those that are coming off of the C5 nerve root, um, the first one is this one up here, the dorsal scapular nerve. So that's this nerve right here. This one is coming off of the C5 ventral ramus. In fact, you can see that C5 ventral ramus right here, and then that dorsal scapular nerve comes off of that pretty quick after it emerges through that interscalene space. So here's your dorsal scapular nerve right here. And remember that this nerve is going to go down to innervate really three muscles, rhomboid major, rhomboid minor, and levator scapulae. All right? so that's your dorsal scapular nerve. Another one, which you can actually see right here, if I go down a little bit, this nerve right here, which appears to be going down the lateral side of the rib cage, this is your, if I go over here, long thoracic nerve. Now the long thoracic nerve does come off of the ventral ramus of C5, but it also has contributions from C6 and C7, so C5 through C7. And remember that long thoracic nerve is going to be innervating serratus anterior. All right? So those two nerves come off of the C5 ventral ramus, and long thoracic nerve is also C6 and C7. The other two, remember, come off of the superior trunk, so let's find that superior trunk. So here's the superior trunk, or upper trunk, right? And if we look, well, here's a nerve coming off of that. Okay? This one is your suprascapular nerve. So that's the first nerve that comes off of the superior trunk. The nerve to subclavius will also be there, but you can't really see it too well in this picture. It's very small muscle. Okay? But you'd also have that nerve to subclavius. Now, when you're looking at this and you're trying to find the cords, Okay, because remember, if we're looking at the brachial plexus, we've got our trunks. They give off a variety of contributions, and they mix and match in different ways. And then you should end up with a lateral cord, a posterior cord, and a medial cord. Now remember, those cords are named according to their orientation relative to the axillary artery. Okay? Now the axillary artery we can't see in this cadaver, but understand that the posterior cord would be posterior to the axillary artery. Lateral cord is lateral to it, and medial cord down here is medial to it. And when you're finding these cords, what's very useful is to find the M structure. Okay, the M structure. And you get this M type of structure because of these posterior and anterior divisions of the trunks. So let me show you what I mean. This is a very useful landmark right here. You see this M? In fact, let me go back here so you can actually find it without the red. So you're looking for this M right here. Okay right there. You see that? I'll go ahead and put the red lines back there. The reason that M is so important is because um, this is really going to help us find uh, the cords of the brachial plexus. Right? So let's actually look at the cords. The cords we see proximal to the M. Okay, the cords are all proximal to the M and the terminal branches are really kind of at the distal end of the M. Okay. So proximal to it, we have the cords. Let's zoom in and take a look at those. All right. So here we have one cord. Okay. Here's one. Here's another right here. And then we've got this one that looks a little bit darker. Um, that's the posterior cord. Okay. So the axillary artery has been removed. But if the axillary artery were present, it would kind of be covering up this cord right here, which is the posterior cord of the brachial plexus. Okay. Now this one over here, 
appears to be the most lateral. Um, so this is going to be the lateral chord of the brachial plexus. And if you backtrack it, you can see that it's really more or less originating from the superior trunk or upper trunk. It does have contributions here from the middle trunk, um, but if we follow it back, it comes mostly from that superior trunk. But this is the most lateral of them, so this is the lateral chord. That would make this over here the medial chord. So when you're finding the chords, what's helpful is to find this M structure. Okay? Here it is without the red lines. Hopefully you can see that. And then here it is again with those red lines. The chords are all proximal to the M. Then we're going to look at the terminal branches. And for the most part, um, these are all going to be distal to the M with the exception of those coming off of the posterior cord. So let's actually look at those. Right? So here's our posterior cord. Right? We can see the posterior cord, we can think of it as bifurcating. Really, it's continuing on as the radial nerve right here, but it's giving off a branch that's going like this. This nerve that's going like this, that seems to be going kind of into the armpit area, this is your axillary nerve. Right? So let's zoom back out and take a look at that. So again, here's your posterior cord. We follow this over here that goes toward the armpit area. This is your axillary nerve. Okay, the axillary nerve is really responsible for innervating deltoid and then also teres minor, which is one of our four rotator cuff muscles. So this is your axillary nerve. And then we can see that as the posterior cord right here gives off that axillary nerve that goes into the armpit area, it's going to continue on really as the radial nerve. And so here's our radial nerve right here. That's our radial nerve. And it's really going to go into the posterior compartment of the brachium and kind of go down that spiral groove of the humerus um, within the triceps muscles. All right. Now that's your posterior cord. Now for the medial cord, let's look at that. So again, let's zoom in, take a look at this. Here is your medial cord. Okay. Remember, we're looking proximal to that M. This is the most medial of them, so this is your medial cord. Now, the medial cord is going to really continue on here. We just follow this line of the M. It's going to continue on as the ulnar nerve. Okay. Median, medial cord, excuse me, medial cord continues on as the ulnar nerve. So we can follow this down, and as it goes into the arm region, it's going to be the most medial of all of those nerves. Okay. So this one right here, this is your ulnar nerve. Then we have the lateral cord of the brachial plexus. So again, we're going back to that M looking proximal to it. Here is the most lateral of them, so this is the lateral cord. Really, the lateral cord is going to continue on as the musculocutaneous nerve. So we follow this. It continues on as this nerve right here, which is the musculocutaneous nerve. Again, I'll zoom back out. And what we see is the musculocutaneous nerve is really going to pierce coracobrachialis. You might not be able to tell that's what this muscle is. There's a coracobrachialis in there. It actually pierces coracobrachialis, and then that allows it to enter into the anterior brachium. And it's going to travel really between brachialis and biceps brachii. So here's your biceps brachii right here. So after it cuts through coracobrachialis and gives some muscular branches to that, if you actually peeled off biceps brachii right here and it left the underlying brachialis muscle, you would actually see the musculocutaneous nerve overlying brachialis, but it'd be under biceps brachii. So it travels between those two muscles. So that's musculocutaneous nerve. Now with this M, the significance of this is that if we look here, here's our lateral cord, and then here's our medial cord. Yes, the medial cord continues on as the ulnar nerve, Yes, the lateral cord continues on as the musculocutaneous nerve. However, notice that each of these two cords, lateral and medial, gives a major contribution, and those two contributions fuse with one another. So this is the middle point of the M right here. And then those two contributions fuse into one nerve, and it continues on like this. This nerve right here is the median nerve. Okay? And so if we follow that median nerve, Notice it's going to enter the brachium region, and it's really going to be uh, lateral to the ulnar nerve. Now, this is where the confusing thing is. The median nerve is not the most medial in the arm. Okay? Median means in the middle. Right? Median means in the middle. So the median nerve is really going to be sort of in the middle of the, of the brachium, and ultimately when we get into the elbow and the forearm, this is in the middle. Ulnar nerve is the most medial of all of these. Ulnar is most medial. 
And then radial, which is right here, which is, remember, a continuation of the posterior cord, that one is going to be the most lateral. Okay. So let's see if there's any other structures here that we need to fill in. And there's actually a couple other structures we can see. And those are the medial and lateral pectoral nerves. When I look at this, here's my inferior trunk. It eventually becomes right here. This is actually the medial cord. So it looks like this nerve is not coming off of the medial cord. It's coming off a little bit sooner, a little more proximally at the inferior trunk. That's okay. Okay, as long as you've got a nerve coming off of this area of the brachial plexus and it's going to uh, the pectoralis muscles, that would make this one the medial pectoral nerve. This one would be the lateral pectoral nerve. Okay? Um, the lateral pectoral, pectoral nerve, generally speaking, really should be coming off of the lateral cord of the brachial plexus, and it may have some contributions there that are cut, and we just can't see them. I also happen to know that this is pectoralis major and not pectoralis minor. The reason I know that is because this nerve right here, this is your medial pectoral nerve. This down here is your lateral pectoral nerve. And really with that, um, if this were pectoralis minor, I should only see the medial pectoral nerve there. Okay, The medial pectoral nerve would actually pierce through pectoralis minor on its way to innervate pectoralis major. Okay, so you, if it were pectoralis minor, first of all, the muscle would be more vertical right here. Okay, this one appears to be reflected a little bit more horizontally. Pectoralis minor is more vertical, and you would only see the medial pectoral nerve actually coming through that. The fact that you see here the medial pectoral nerve, it doesn't appear to be piercing the muscle. It actually appears to be going um, kind of underneath it to provide innervation. And you see lateral pectoral nerve here. That indicates to me that this right here really is pectoralis major. Okay, Pectoralis minor has actually been removed in this picture. Okay, So with these two nerves, medial and lateral pectorals, uh, you're going to see some genetic variation. Really what you need to be looking for is, first of all, a pectoralis minor, if present, and the medial pectoral nerve will shoot right through that. It'll pierce it and go through it. And then pectoralis major will have both of these nerves right here. But again, understand there can be some variation there in the structure. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of a cadaver view of the brachial plexus. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.